Beautiful, isn't it? This is the newest addition to the museum, a massive full-scale replica of the mighty Apollo spacecraft that took 24 astronauts to and from the moon. Now, while most people are familiar with the most famous of these missions, that of Apollo 11 with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, there's actually a prequel story to be told, that of the Apollo test program that lasted nearly half a decade. During the 1960s, the space race was in full swing, and America was losing. The Soviets had bested the United States by being the first nation to put a satellite into orbit, Sputnik. By 1961, they achieved the high ground again by putting the first man into outer space, Yuri Gagarin. Needless to say, the Americans were playing catch-up. The United States' first venture into low-Earth orbit came about during the Mercury space program. But it would be this massive 100-foot rocket, the Titan, that would allow U.S. astronauts the opportunity to do spacewalks as well as extended missions in space in preparation for Apollo. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Only 36 months after that famous speech of President Kennedy's, the first Apollo spacecraft was launched into low Earth orbit, the one designated SA-6. Over the next three years, half a dozen unmanned test flights were completed, utilizing a plethora of different variations of Apollo spacecraft. Tragically, it would be during one of the first manned Apollo missions that tragedy would strike. An onboard fire spiraled out of control aboard Apollo 1, killing all the crew. And then, to add insult to injury, the Soviets were catching up, utilizing their massive moon rocket the N-1. Towering at over 340 feet and weighing a massive 6 million pounds, it was a true threat to the Apollo program. So, to counteract this, the Americans launched the first fully assembled Saturn V moon rocket in November of 1967, aboard Apollo 4. This was the first test of America's massive rocket. At 363 feet and 6.2 million pounds, it was a little larger than its Soviet counterpart. The Saturn V rocket utilized the most powerful engines in all of mankind, these massive Rocketdyne F-1s. Put together, these produce an earthquake producing 150 million horsepower, and as mentioned in our first episode, got an environmentally friendly 4.9 inches to the gallon. Apollo 7 was the first manned crew, which tested the new command and service modules within low Earth orbit. The mission after this would be the infamous Apollo 8 and its orbit around the moon. On December 24th of 1968, this mission would snap one of the most famous pictures within the history of the world at the time. They called it Earthrise. Apollo 9 would fly within low Earth orbit for nearly a week and a half, testing the equipment of the lunar module. Finally, on May 18th of 1969, the final test flight of the Apollo test program, Apollo 10, began its voyage. Commanded by General Stafford, for whom this beautiful museum is named after, Apollo 10 would fly to within 47,000 feet of the lunar surface. It would be these test flights, sacrifices, and hard work that sadly go unnoticed as they were eclipsed by Apollo 11's moon landing. But man's first steps on the lunar surface wouldn't have happened without them. It is a rather remarkable achievement for mankind that in 1903, two bicycle mechanics fought their way into the air with the world's first powered airplane. Two dozen years later, Charles Lindbergh would make another milestone with his solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. And only 42 years after that, man would take his first steps onto the moon. 
The remarkable amount of engineering, preparation, and determination shown within the Apollo test program should never be forgotten. And hopefully someday the Apollo space program will be bested, this time by astronauts stepping onto another celestial body, that of Mars. And when that day comes, hopefully those future generations won't forget the shoulders of giants that those future astronauts will be standing upon.